Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome back to Tomahawk Entertainment News. I'm your host, Connor Barrett, bringing you the latest in entertainment. This is our last broadcast of the year, so it's going to be a pretty special one. We have Brady York with NHS Gamer and Movie Dumpster, you know, bringing it back. Rest in peace, Gibby. After that, we have Brady and Garrett working on a little something called Discount Diamonds, showing us some great games on a great budget. Then we have Alex Perez with Tech Terms to Know, as well as an overview of Norman's Land Party. To finish it off, we have Tucker Roberts with NHS Gamer, reviewing Pikmin 3 and Super Smash Bros. And like always, I'll be kicking it off with Tomahawk Sports. In local sports news, baseball, softball, and track have all come to an end at the end of the year. But, you know, 7-on-7 seven seven is starting up, and the girls are starting a lot of volleyball like TGIF. So uh, that's all to just prepare for next year. In national sports news, the NFL draft is coming and going. For the first pick in the draft, Cleveland picked up Baker Mayfield. Sorry, son, you had a pretty good career, but, uh, hmm. You know, he probably wasn't the best quarterback in the draft, but I don't know if anything can help Cleveland at this point. And for the second pick, the Giants picked up Fletcher Six. Fletcher Six? No, nah, I don't think that can... No, nah, that's, that's that's not right. But uh, oh, they got a running back from Penn State. He's 230 and runs a 4-4-40. I don't know. I probably would have went Six, honestly. He's a real monster. You know, be all you can be. Well, that's it for this year. I'm Connor Barrett signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Hello again, Brady here, and today I'm reviewing a state champion animation made right here in the studio. The movie I'm talking about is Game of Emotions. Starting off with the detail and effectiveness of certain scenes and transitions used through the film, the way the creators used the calendar to simulate time passing was a very effective and nice transition throughout. The extreme detail was a very nice touch to the other words mundane looking spaces, such as drawing a picture of the magician and having a picture on the wall. The fourth wall break halfway through gives a sense of realness to the characters. Giving the magician a sinister voice <coughs> and making him flash while we see a boy Jay Copperfield in a black veil of thought also adds to the creepiness of the scene. In the end, we see a fully faced Jay Copperfield as an adult cured of his borderline personality disorder and in one last grab for power over Jay, the magician tries to get him to pick a card but then realizes he no longer has any power over him. Though we have a flawed grading system, we personally believe that this film deserves an 18 out of 20. I mean, did you see who gets third? <coughs> Walk of this time. This has been Brady, signing out. Dang Brady, you need to get that cold figured out. I mean, you've been coughing all day. Yeah, I know, it's just, I've been taking medicine for it, it's just, it's a bad thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello everybody, I'm Brady, and this week we have a new segment that actually isn't based on the five point system. Welcome to Discount Diamonds. In this segment, we'll be telling you about great games on the market today, but only games that are reasonably priced for $10 and under. Here's just a few great games available today. Adventure Capitalist is a game where you start from the ground up as a lemonade salesman, and rise to the top of the economic food chain through buying more businesses, upgrading existing businesses, and paying people to run those businesses for you, now for free on Steam. On the flip side is Adventure Communist, but since it's the same premise, we've counted them both as one. Speaking of communism, have you ever wanted to rule your own socialist society? Well, for $5.99 on Steam, Ostalgi the Berlin Wall is a great game for you. Depending on your goal, you can be a liberal reformist who creates a free market system for his people, or you can go with the more fun one and keep conservative values and hold your own as a true socialist. <laughs> Or maybe instead of running the country, you may just want to be another citizen. Papers, Please is about just that, as you play as a border patrolman who decides whether people will enter or leave the country of Arstotska in order to support his family. 
For all you weebs out there, Carpe Diem is a small visual novel about your date with a girl named I. However, it turns out that I is really an AI program that you've been programming. So, basically, it's accurate. You know, thinking you're in a world with a girlfriend, but you're really a sad, lonely man on your computer in your room, alone. Yep, accurate. For our last game, I have another question for you. Do you like games where you build things and fend for yourself? In that case, you should play... Competitive Minecraft. I mean, Fortnite, uh... Well, that's all for this episode. My name is... Garrett Stone. Brady York. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching, and see you, see you next, next time. time. Game begin. Hello, I'm Alex Perez, and welcome to a new segment called Tech Terms to Know, where we aim to explain some terms that relate to tech and games to help you find the products that are right for you. This week, we talk about review bombing. What an interesting topic, review bombing. This is something that, in most cases, spells the end for a game and even a company. But what is review bombing? Review bombing is a sort of protest that is taken up by people who don't like a certain aspect of a game or product. This can be seen in the case of EA's Battlefront, where the game was review bombed due to putting out a game that gives an unfair advantage to people who buy loot boxes. Now, this doesn't always have to be a negative thing, as in the case of Assassin's Creed Origins, where it was review bombed but with nothing but praise, giving Assassin's Creed Origins a large boost in the market, possibly saving the game. Most times, people will post some sort of bad review about a game on a website like Reddit. From there, it will be copied by just about anyone who agrees with the cause. And then, the final part of review bombing starts. The protesters will go to any review systems, any review sites they can, and drop the review bombs. While review bombing can be an ending blow or a saving grace, either way it can be used to send a message to a company, telling them just what their fans want, and what they want gone. This has been Alex Perez, with this week's Tech Terms to Know, signing out. Parties where a bunch of people get together and play video games, doesn't matter what console or you know, PlayStation, Xbox, or Wii, whatever, didn't matter. Nintendo stuff, didn't matter. Just everybody playing games together at the same location. It's more enjoyable to play games with other people because you get the experience of having to play with other people rather than playing by your own self. Uh, it, it's just everyone has their own opinions on different things, so it makes it easier for you to actually put your opinion into the game, what you think that uh, needs to be changed, what you think is good, versus playing by yourself and having an opinion on, a sole opinion on everything. I like, I like teamwork. I'm big on it. You know, I played football and I feel like if you play games with other people, it forces you to interact, especially people that aren't, you know, super social. You know, it forces, it forces you to, to have fun with other people instead of just sitting around doing nothing, you know, playing by yourself. Playing video games with other people is so much is, is more fun than playing alone sometimes because you can you don't get the same experiences. Like something can happen with your friend that you that you know that you can laugh about or get really excited about. With single player games, is, is you can't really get that experience with you know just playing by yourself. Yes, I have met a lot of my good friends on uh, on online games. People that I've met just do games that I've played that I've been playing with for a couple of years now and I've actually got to know them, they got to know me. Some of them I know in real life, like one's my cousin that I play with a lot and, and uh, I just have, I just, I've met a lot of cool people through the internet like this way, through video games. My party is a group of guys, not girls, and where all of them come together, play some video games on all their consoles, PCs like Overwatch, League of Legends, etc, etc, and just have a grand old time. Yeah, I have um, this friend down in Austin. I have two or three over in London, and I believe another one from Australia. Pretty cool guys. All of them guys, no girls. Oh yeah, definitely. I man, I've met a crazy amount of people. And I've learned a lot about different people and like the way they live in different countries, you know, because with, with games online, you have the opportunity to meet people that are across the globe, you know, 
and they sit there and they talk about, you know, how their day was while they were playing or, you know, what it is that they, what it is they like about the game. And, you know, it kind of gives you a different perspective on the way things are. Almost all my friends are online friends. I have very little friends IRL. Uh, kind of like how, like, you try to play, like, catch with yourself. Well, it's pretty hard to play catch with yourself. Kind of how it is playing video games with yourself. It's kind of hard to have fun, but with a group of people, it's pretty easy to have fun in that way. Hello and welcome back to an all new NHS Gamer. I'm Tucker Roberts and today we'll be reviewing Pikmin 3 for the Wii U. Pikmin 3 is the third entry in the popular Pikmin series. Pikmin first came out on the Nintendo GameCube in 2001. The Pikmin series have to go to an Earth-like planet with strange creatures called Pikmin. Pikmin 3's story starts off where Planet Copai's inhabitants are suffering through a famine and they sent three explorers by the name of Alf, Brittany, and Charlie. These explorers were given the task to find a planet with enough food to save their home planet. Pikmin 3's gameplay is dynamic with each Pikmin having their own strengths and weaknesses. Each Pikmin has their own feature that corresponds to what ability they have. Red Pikmin are resistant to fire, Blue Pikmin can go to water, Rock Pikmin can break rocks, etc, etc. There are many species of enemies that will try to attack your Pikmin, which you can throw your Pikmin at them and defeat them, and then take them back to the Pikmin's Onion to get more Pikmin. Pikmin 3's controls are very simplistic. There is a basic tutorial at the beginning that takes a short amount of time that gives you a quick rundown of the controls. Pikmin 3's immersion is wonderful with it keeping some of the Pikmin from the previous ones and adding in some brand new ones, like the pink flying Pikmin and the rock Pikmin. Pikmin 3's charm is astounding with beautiful graphics, amazing music, and stunning colors. And also having to manage a group of up to 100 Pikmin at once. But wait, there's more. Not only is there a story, but there's also a multiplayer split screen that which can be played either the competitive battle mode or work together in the mission mode. And that tops off this game review. And our overall score for Pikmin 3 is a full score of 20 out of 20. This has been Tucker Roberts, and don't leave your Pikmin alone. Hello, and welcome back to an all-new NHS Gamer. I'm Tucker Roberts, and today we'll be reviewing Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. Super Smash Bros. has been one of Nintendo's biggest hits dating back to its first release on the Nintendo 64 in 1999. Super Smash Bros. is a fighting game which has characters from some of Nintendo's biggest hits and some other popular characters from other well-known companies. Super Smash Bros. gameplay is focused on getting your opponents off the screen to win, but it's not that easy. You also have to factor in that the more damage you do and take, the higher the launch rate of you and your opponent will have. Super Smash Bros. has a wide range of stages totaling up to 55 stages that are different in many ways in reference games the fighters are from. Unlike other fighting games, Super Smash Bros. has hazards, platforms, items, and each character has their own final smash. A character's final smash has references to the character and can damage and usually launch the opponent. All these extra things can of course be turned off to make the game more competitive and not luck based. Super Smash Bros. controls uses every button for a basic attack, grab, or shield. These can be used simultaneously with another button to do more powerful attacks and have their own variants for when on the ground and in the air. Unlike other fighting games, Super Smash Bros. has combos that are less complicated to do. And there is a skill on how easy and how hard each combo is, but most can be pulled off by anyone. Super Smash Bros. Immersion is astounding with how they can come up with moves that all have references to the game a character is from. Even the little things like grabbing and jumping have something relating to the character. 
Super Smash Bros. Charm is enthralling by the 58 playable characters that each fall into their own play style, and it's no doubt that you'll find a character that falls into yours. And if you get tired of one of them, there's still 57 more to try. And that finishes off this game review, and our overall Tomahawk score for Super Smash Bros. is a 15 out of 20. This has been Tucker Roberts, and don't be a cloud main. Did you play that? Looks like it. And that's all for entertainment news. Have a great summer. Be sure to come back next year. We're going to be doing big things. In the meantime, be sure to look out on YouTube for the movies we'll be working on over the summer. I'm Connor Barrett, signing off.